Hey, what's up guys? It's Eli with Night Jiu Jitsu and I've got a takedown video for you today. This is one that I get a lot of requests for and I just haven't ever done it for some reason. But um, this is really honestly one of my theoretically favorite takedowns of all time. I've always loved the Fireman's Carry or Katagaruma from Judo. The Fireman's Carry is a really cool throw. You see it a lot in wrestling, you see it a lot in Judo and um, you see it a lot in Sambo and um, it just is always kind of eluded me a little bit. I was never great at it. And then I learned a variation of it several years back um, and I, I can't even for the life of me think where I learned this variation originally but I've been doing it ever since and um, I like it a whole lot. So maybe this will help make it a little bit more accessible to you. So um, if we go here like this and the, a good place to use this one is if Alex is kind of stiff arming me on this side here. now. Um, whenever you have somebody who's stiff arming you on this dominant collar side grip like this, it can be a pain because I can't get in for good trips a lot of the time. Um, maybe he's not necessarily overextending where I could get like a, a one arm throw like Ibn Sionagi, Kosha Guruma, or any of these throws. Um, but what's good about this variation is that he doesn't have to be super over committed, he just has to be stiff arming me. So whenever he is stiff arming me like that, um, something that I can look to do if I can get the sleeve here, which I like to get this grip pick up with my thumb here. And I wanna make him think that I'm gonna break this grip. What I'm actually doing is kind of pulling here and jerking to make sure that he's really committed to this. And then I'm gonna wrap this over. So I get my elbow above his elbow line here this way, and I wanna tuck it down and through. Now, once I do, this second arm here, I'm looking to go up between his legs and get my bicep up into his crotch. And whenever I do that, my knee is also gonna hit the ground between, right? So we go here. My head, I wanna duck all the way through Almost looks like I'm gonna put myself in a guillotine, but this arm ensures that it's not a guillotine. So we go here this way, I sit in, and we go across, and there's the execution of the throw itself. So um, once we get here, so we're like this, and so I'm maybe playing like this, I'm watching out for his secondary hand, I'm here trying to break this grip, but actually all I'm doing is getting him extra committed to that stiff arm, and then I'm gonna wrap here through. This is gonna to help to, bre to break down and bend his arm this way. I duck through and out on this side. My knee is gonna go down in the middle here so I get my good posture back. My arm goes up between his legs. Lastly, this leg here is gonna slide out this direction so I don't have to actually pick him up like maybe a traditional, uh, more traditional fireman's carry, but instead it slides out. So I think about my hamstring blocking his leg on this side and then tossing him over the top like this. As a variation on this one, and probably a, a fairly dangerous uh, variation, is this right here. Um, if we're here and my jacket has come undone because we're, we're sitting here playing for grips and whatever, so another way that I can do this, rather than grabbing his sleeve, and so this is a good one, especially if he has really good uh, tight tapered sleeves that I don't have a good grip on, is for me to take the tail of my gi here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw my arm over the same kind of way, this direction. So I'm taking this skirt piece here, wrapping it over. So the danger here, obviously, is that even though I've got a good grip, I've got his arm broken down and bent, um, I'm wrapping his wrist pretty tightly right here. So it's very dangerous, and it can be like a little wrist lock. But I can still use this here. I'm gonna do it carefully on this one because it's really tight on his wrist on that side, right? Now, um, not long ago, there was a viral video going around um, where somebody hit a wrist lock in competition. I've seen this. I've been hit with this before personally, and um, I've seen it hit several times in competition, just this one viral video made the rounds. What happened is rather than ducking through, going for the throw, this guy hit here this way, and he came out to here this way. So once, once he wraps through like this, he comes up, looks out, and then there's a little, it's a bit of a wrist lock, a bit of a shoulder lock, just all the bad things on this side. So be very careful if you're using that kind of grip, but for the right kind of context, it can be a really useful, really powerful grip as well. The problem then becomes though, is like you see this really cool throw, you wind up in this position, but I'm kind of on my back, so what do we do for the follow-up off of this? Well, I've got a couple of different things that I, I kind of like. One I like a whole lot. The other is the first follow-up that I really learned. The first follow-up that I ever learned was to go in for a leg lock off of it or a foot lock off of it. So once we go in here, I wrap in this way, and then I circle through and try to wrap in like this. Now, I just don't personally care for the foot to be up on this side. Now, if it's a heel hook situation, that's a different story, but we're in the gi, so that's, that's a little more frowned upon. But this is one uh, variation of how we can wind up um, coming into a position off of this throw, is this leg entanglement kind of variation. 
A follow-up that I personally prefer a lot though is uh, this one that gets me to side control. So the way we're gonna look to do it is again, I'm here, I'm fighting for this grip, I'm getting him committed to that strong uh, stiff arm on this side. I cut through, I bounce kind of over to the side. So what's actually happening here, if I rewind, I hit this position, I use this connection on this side here, that coupled with pushing off of my elbow and kicking my legs up and across to get me into this kind of um, reverse scarf hold kind of position, or maybe a twister side control we might refer to it as. And then as soon as I get to this position here, I'm blocking the legs, I'm backing up here like this to make sure that I'm cutting everything from the waist down off. And Alex isn't able to have a very strong push to try to get out of this position immediately. So again, the whole thing from here, I wrap through, pull myself up and across to this position here. Right, so we wind up here, even if his grip was still attached, it's not gonna really do much of anything and it's actually putting his arm in a compromised position. I've got a clean mount from this position here. I've got twister back takes and all kinds of cool stuff that you can watch other videos for. So anyway guys, that's a modified Katagaruma or Fireman's Carry, uh, one that I like a whole lot, one that's kind of more accessible to me. So see if you like this one, see if it helps you out um, and see about those follow-ups too if you like those or if you have anything else. Let me know what you think about it in the comments and like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Thank you for watching Night Jiu Jitsu. Thank you.